excited about this time being here with you to teach you this lesson. It's about how not to get hurt. See, I grew up in a time uh, whenever I, I lived with um, an alcoholic father till I was in probably the second grade. Then he left home, and then my mom remarried another alcoholic. And so that I'm really much for the our youth program, as you can imagine. Then I have three alcoholic brothers and a sister that's been in and out of uh, mental institutions and has some kind of some problems, you know, not... Some of it induced because of a, of a husband that's wrong, but um, I love her, but I, I know she's never gotten over the fact that her dad was the way he was. So I really believe that those of us that have had hurts in our past um, are very uh, conscientious about it. You know, we, we are very w aware of hurts and things like that, any kind of a hurt. So when I first got saved at 17, I really thought that there was a way to not get hurt. I thought, you know, you just didn't get hurt. You know how I thought you didn't get hurt? You just had this wall up here. And you had the wall up, and when the wall was up, then you couldn't get close enough to me to hurt my feelings. You know, I really thought that's how a good Christian was supposed to be. You know, as a matter of fact, when I was, the second year I was at, uh, uh, at Hiles Anderson College, I did a, a lesson on how not to get hurt, and I taught this very thing. You don't have to get hurt. You know, but in my young, immature Christian mind, I'd only been saved like three years, I really believed that the way to not get hurt was just to keep people at a distance, don't let them get close enough to you to hurt me, you know. Of course, that's not the real world. Those of you that live with other people, how many of you live with somebody else? Yeah, amen. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And, uh, it's impossible to not live with another person, another human being, and say, I, I won't get hurt. You will get hurt. That's a fact of life. So I'm going to show you a lady in the Bible that I admire and love. And I noticed that she had an exceptionally good spirit about not being hurt. After I tell you a little bit about this lady, then I'm going to give you some points, some definite points. I, if you want to write them down, you can. Tomorrow I'll give you a handout. Both the other two nights I'll give you handouts, but tonight I didn't plan one. Um, but that, uh, that lady is Elizabeth. Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. It says... And, Chapter 1, verses 5. I'm not going to read all the scriptures because, you know, this is not Bible reading time. This is time to share some thoughts and stories and things like that. But uh, I do want to read part of it. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abi, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both, verse 6, and they were both righteous before God. Would I love God to say that about me? You know, I know my husband is righteous, and I know he lives for God, and I know he's trying to please God. I, wouldn't you love it, Mrs. King, if God would say, and they were both righteous toward God? Whew, that would be such a compliment. So Elizabeth here, it was said, that was said about her, walking in all the commandments. Now, how were they righteous before God? Walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Ladies, let me just say this to you. There's too many of us ladies sitting in fundamental Baptist churches letting our feelings get hurt because of something the preacher says in the pulpit. Can I say this to you? That is not scriptural. You know, you don't, you're not supposed to get offended. I had a lady come up to me and say, the preacher preached the whole sermon about me. And I said, well, did you need it? <laughs> she said, you know, she was quite taken back because she thought I was going to say, oh, I can't believe that preacher. Would do. You know, now most of the time when people say that to me, it's they just feel like the preacher preached it to them. You know, they just feel like he was using them for an illustration. It's feelings. Because we women, what are we? We're feelings personified. You know, it's, it's personified. We are really big feelings oriented. Uh, but right there it says, how do you be righteous? By walking in the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. If God led you and your husband to this church, then you should be willing to follow, follow the ordinance, ordinances and uh, ways of this church. Be willing. Now, if you're not willing, if there's something that perhaps you've not given up, I'm not going to get on any tangents or talks about any certain thing, but if there's something that's taught here at this church, let's take, let's take for instance, the type of music that you listen to. You know, maybe you are one of those people that have, the, have country music playing in your car, you know, and the preacher preaches against it, and he tries to teach you why it's wrong to listen to country music and how it, how it influences you for wrong, and et cetera, et cetera, but you've chosen to uh, still listen to it. Then you know what? You shouldn't be going around bragging to everybody that you do. Oh, that preacher, he preached against but I don't care. I'm still going to. See what I'm saying? You know, then you're not, you're still, you're not blameless. 
Now, I'm not saying go under, uh, underground, but I am saying if you're not going to go by the ordinance and, and the, the policies of this church, don't go around and advertise it to everybody. At least while you're around other people that are reading your testimony, because if anybody that knows you're a member of New Testament Baptist Church, they shouldn't be able to hear you and see you do things like that. That's just policy. Do you want to be righteous like Elizabeth? That's what it says there. Then it says, and they had, verse number seven, and they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. Now, let me say something to you, ladies. This says that she was old. Now, we don't know what old is, do we? There's not an older person in this room, right? Nobody over 60? No, right? Okay, so I'm not over 60 yet. I'm working on it, uh, but I'm not there yet. So it says she was an old, she was well stricken in years. But she was barren. Now, in Bible times, when you weren't able to have a baby, uh, it was a reproach unto you. Because the greatest thing you could do for your family was to give them a man-child to carry on the, the name. So, this, here's a righteous woman. A woman that God called righteous, but God had chosen to let her be barren and not have any children. Do you, I do not detect, though, any system of, of bitterness toward God. Do you detect it? No. She decided that whatever God brought in her life, she's going to be happy. You know, some people, Mrs. King, some people would say, well, so many of the people are down at that meeting. Why, didn't they, why do we even have a meeting on Monday night? You know what? God knew when Brother King set up this meeting that that planning commission was going to happen on Monday night. And the preacher is the man of God. He's the leader. And if he chooses to let us keep on having a meeting, even though all the people aren't here, then we're going to make the best of it. And we're going to still learn something. And we're going to act like everybody's here and we're not going to even care. See, when you just trust God, it doesn't matter. You know, that, that's what Elizabeth did. She said, I'm barren, but God, it's God that has not chosen to allow me to have a child, and it's okay. But isn't it interesting, though? Elizabeth had to go through so many years of being barren just so that she could have John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. So in all of this, in her barrenness, in her shame of not having a child, God turned it around, and she got to have the person that would announce the coming of Christ. Wow, what an honor that was. But see, Elizabeth, all those years, she didn't know it, but she chose not to get hurt about it. So that's another point about it. Uh, verse number 25, it says there, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. She was a happy person. She said, I had a reproach, but God has dealt with me, and now he's taken away that reproach. I'm going to have a child. Now, if you know this story, you know that Zacharias went inside the temple, and while he's in there, an angel said, you're going to have this baby, and, you know, and, he, and he didn't believe it, so he struck him dumb. So when he came out, he couldn't talk. Uh, so when he came out and couldn't talk, then he wrote down you know, that the name was going to be John. So we'll look over in verse number 60. Verse number 60 he had written down the name's going to be John. Back in Bible times, you didn't use just any name. Most of the time, a name of a child was after somebody in the family. It had family orientation to it. But, so everybody expected that, that name to go something in Zechariah's line. But instead, uh, he had said it was going to be John. So in verse 60, it says, And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. I see here a lady that backs up her husband. You know, that's how we can be righteous women. That's how we can live a victorious life and not be hurt. You know what? There are, I, I can't even tell you the number of things that happen in my life that I am not for. If I sit down and try to decide, now, do I really want to do this? Do I really think it's right to do it? Can I tell you an example that just happened yesterday? We sang a song yesterday that we have a list of songs that we're working on, and my husband just decided that we were going to sing it. It was called... God is still good. I want you to know, I didn't want to sing that song because I know we're not ready for it, or at least I think we're not ready for it. If I give all my excuses and think it all through, and I don't want to get up here and have egg on my face, and I don't want to feel stupid, and, you know, and I know we're not ready for it, and we might come in together, and you know, everything might not be in sync. But you know what I said? I said, okay, we'll do it. I didn't tell him. I wanted to tell him. But I didn't tell him because I'm trying to be a good Christian. I'm trying to be righteous. Uh, I'm not even to the part about being, not being hurt yet, but I'm trying to be like Elizabeth. Because when you're a righteous person, you'll see later on how not to get hurt. So I just we just sang it. And whatever happens, happens. Now don't come up and say, oh, you did a good job, because I won't believe you anyway. Uh, but anyway, you see what I'm saying? 
you just don't decide whether you want to follow your husband. If God, if you were smart enough, get it? If you were smart enough to marry that man, you got it? Then you ought to be smart enough to follow him. Because when you follow him, it makes him stronger. And the more, the stronger he gets, the better he looks, the better the family looks, the better everybody looks. See, we've been, we've been sold a bill of goods in the United States. We think that women are smarter than men. You know, like when I said Zacharias came out dumb, you know what I mean? I, in my mind, I almost said it too. I almost said, you know, like most men. Because everybody does dumb men jokes. Now, I didn't say it, and I don't think it. But it's just a natural part of our vocabulary to think men are dumb. Most of the time, it's because men can't go as fast as we can, right? Huh? Is that true with most of y'all? I, I can do three things at one time, and my husband's still trying to figure out what one of those things I'm doing, you know? Now, that doesn't mean he's dumber than me. You know, if I'm really smart, I realize that he's just made differently than I am. God made us to be multi-purpose people. You know, because we got all these kids hanging off of us. Uh, you know, and we got to go while we're feeling rotten, right? All these pregnant ladies. I don't know what's in the water around here, but I'm glad I'm leaving. Uh, yeah, isn't that the truth? Uh, so, uh, do you understand what I'm saying, though? We, she was a smart woman because she followed her husband. So, those are just a few of the positive points I see in what made Elizabeth a godly woman. And I love godly women, and I want to be like that. Now, how not to get hurt. I'm going to give you uh, three points, okay? One of the points has lots of subpoints, but three points. Ready? Number one, how not to get hurt. Thinking back with Elizabeth and how she lived her life and didn't allow things to hurt her feelings. Okay, first and foremost, you got to believe the Bible when it says in Psalm 119, 165, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. You know what happens? If you, if you get offended by something somebody said, you know what? People can't hurt my feelings. I, I can go into certain situations, and I'm intimidated. It's probably hard for you to believe, but I'm intimidated by some people, especially people that have name brand clothes on. You know that they got it all together, and you can tell they got it all together. They're kind of highfalutin. Do you know what I mean by highfalutin? I'm not, there's not a highfalutin bone in my body. You can tell that, can't you? People feel so comfortable come up to me. And when I speak, they say, oh, Loretta, I relate to you. And I'm thinking, I don't know if that's good or bad, you know. But it's just how it is. And so when I go up, to, I have to force myself. In your all's church yesterday morning, I tried to go up with all different types of people. If there was somebody that I felt might be a little bit well, well to do, I still try to go up to them and talk to them. Then there's times when I go up and talk to them and I stick my foot in my mouth. I say something stupid. And then I feel stupid about that. And, I, and then I think, well, they're just trying to make me feel stupid. You want to say that, don't you? But that is getting offended. So as soon as I say something, they, may, they say something back to me. It makes me feel like I said the wrong thing because they want to make fun of me and they want to make me feel like a hillbilly. You know what I do? I say that verse to myself. Great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. And I, let, I don't let myself get offended. Do you realize how many times you've gotten your feelings hurt just because you decided to let yourself get your feelings hurt because you're so feelings oriented. So, you know what? I tell people, I really believe you ought to wear a sandwich sign on you that says, I am not right with God. I have not read my Bible. When you get, let yourself get your feelings hurt, right? If we're going to believe the Bible, we got to believe what it says. When it says, great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Uh, I'll tell you a situation. I hate it when God gives me a talk and then gives me good, such good illustrations to back it up. Last year, my daughter was graduating from high school. Now, all of us know that we want to, you know, we want our daughters and our sons, you know, we want everything to be just perfect when they're graduating. And so and I started looking for a place for Jeannie to get some senior pictures taken. You know, we got to look ahead two or three weeks, and got to see, are we going to be there long enough to be able to get the pictures, and uh, it's got to be the right price, because, you know, we're cheap, uh, and so we, everything's involved, so I called a place called the Picture People, do y'all have them out here, and they do a pretty good job, you know, nothing like a studio, but pretty good job, and I hunted down the place, you get where I'm going, I hunted down the place for her to get her picture taken, I helped her pick out her outfit, because she asked me to. I helped her fix her makeup, because she asked me to. I took her in the car to go get this picture taken, right? 
we get there and we start taking a picture and when we're there they they want to give you these packages and you get these deals and it's a better deal and we hadn't had a family picture taken so a few days later we were going to come back and get a family picture taken what happens while we're walking out the door of that store but my daughter turns to me and she says to me she said mom she said do you think that when we come back and you know you have five sittings and do you think that I could get a picture with dad that went all over me do you know why I had done I had I and I wanted to say to her what am I chop liver you know what I'm saying now while I was walking out the door she said that now let me tell you this she was here walking I remember it just like it was yesterday God you're so good to give me such a good memory uh, and she was right here and we were walking past those the stores out out of the mall and I kept looking in them the window of it and I said are you going to get offended or not you know I said that to myself now Jeannie's talking to me and I'm trying to just sound gr grunt things because I'm trying to get myself under control because I am so disappointed that she didn't say mom do you know when we come back could do you think I could get a picture taken with you and dad I mean at least just you and dad no it wasn't any of that it was you could I get a picture with dad I thought man you know that could be pretty offensive couldn't it I mean if you let it but you know what happened just those few steps within two stores within two stores I'm looking in the in the window and I said you know what I'm a pretty good mom I, I started patting myself on the back you know what I said to myself <laughs> I said I'm not gonna get offended by that I'm gonna just say you know all these years I am the one that's been pointing her toward her dad I'm the one that wanted her to have a good relationship with her dad. I'm the one that made her love her dad so much. So I'm pretty good, and it's all because of me that she wanted to get a picture taken with him. Isn't that a good thinking? And it's probably true, but you know what? If it's not true, it helped me not to get offended. <laughs> you say, Loretta, you do a lot of talking to yourself. You know, you really do. If you're not going to get offended, you really do have to talk to yourself a lot because the natural man wants to flare up. And say things now Jeannie has heard me tell this story in a meeting she's heard this talk and she knows and I've discussed it with her and I told her I wouldn't want her to change a thing and she does have a picture with her and her dad and I'm really glad I really am now that I've gone through it all those steps of pat myself on the back that I'm the one that helped her be that way you know what I'm saying but I I just chose not to be offended and that's why I didn't let my feelings get hurt do you, do you understand how many times in your life you could save yourself a lot of hurt if you just choose not to get offended by repeating the Bible verse, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. That's really it. Okay, then number two. So first and foremost is believe the Bible when it says Psalm 119, 165. That's the first one, okay? Then number two is, this is a hard one. Number two is don't expect too much. Don't expect too much. You know how hard it is to not expect things from other people. It, it's so hard. I talked to a lady one time and she said, my husband never tells me he loves me. I said, how long you been married? She said, 22 years. I said, you mean he just never says it? And, and she said, no. I said, does he show you that he loves you? She said, well, he goes to work every day. And I just let her keep talking. You know, I didn't say, you know, if a good counselor doesn't talk all the time. A good counselor asks a question and then waits for you to think through and respond. And so I said, so how else does he show you he love you? Well, you know, he takes, he's a good dad to the kids. And, you know, he takes me out once in a while. Not every week, but once in a while. You know, she started just saying these things. And I just let her keep talking. And then you know what I said to her? I said, you know what, honey? I said, I think that if I had a husband that was that good to me, that he did all those things for me, and he never said that he loved me, I'd stop expecting him to. Do you understand that? We set ourselves up for hurt by expecting something from somebody that's not going to give it to us. It's just natural. In my mind, I just don't, I do not expect anything from anybody. I was teasing you know about those gifts? You got that gift out. And I, I teased and said, she's got gifts. One of them's going to be for me. I mean, that's going to be for me. I said, I'll be really disappointed. I want it if none of them are. And then she gave you yours first. I said, see, I got disappointed, didn't I? Then she gave me the second one, and that was for Jeannie Mae. And I thought, oh, I really blew it. But there, I didn't know there was three, so I got one anyway. But see what, do you see how you set yourself up for, for hurt? By expecting it. 
If you have a negative mother, some of you have have extended family. <laughs> you got one sitting next to you. Uh, she's laughing because her mother's sitting next to her. If you have a negative mother, she's been negative all your life, then every Saturday when you call her, because you're supposed to keep contact with her, or you're, you should, you know, don't expect her to be anything but negative. You know, you try to c- control the conversation as much as you can and keep on positive things, but when she starts getting negative, you just sort of just go in do, 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 do mode. You know, I got a mode that I just sort of just phase out, you know, and I'll just listen and say, uh-huh, oh, that's terrible. You know, I, th- there's things that I say when somebody's in that negative mode, but I have to talk to them. But I never call and expect them to ask me questions about my life. You know, I don't expect it because I know what's going to happen. I know what that person's like. Some of you are living in a dream world that somebody's going to change. You know what? You got to get out of that dream world. That person's not going to change. If you happen to have married a man that sort of is a realist, do you know what a realist is? That's somewhat of a negative person because they are really down to earth and they see things the real way it is. They're not op- very optimistic, maybe. Then quit trying to change him. Let him be that way. Try to be as positive as you can in whatever situations you're allowed to, but stop trying to change these people that's in your lives. Uh, whenever um, I, I have a friend that she worked at... Um, in a Christian school for years and years and years. She's an older lady. And it came time for her to retire. And when it came time to retire, would you expect after you worked in a school for a long time, would you? Would it be just natural for you to expect the school to honor you a little bit your last year there? Wouldn't, it, wouldn't that be natural? But see, we if we're going to be great Christians, if we're going to be righteous people, we cannot be natural. We've got to be righteous so she got into a situation. She was her, the last uh, parent-teacher meeting before the year was going to end in May. And the school administrator got up and said, now this is the last time Mrs. Such-and-Such Such will be in our school. And she's done a great job for us. So let's give her a hand. They gave her a hand. No presents. No, you know, nothing like that. But just give her a hand. But then the, the school administrator proceeded to say all these things about how the school was going to be different right there with that lady being there, sitting there. You know, and it sounded like the school was going to be so much better with that old bag gone. You know, that's what it sounded like to her. So I was sitting talking to her, and she said, this is what happened, and she started saying all these things. And I said, I started getting the picture right away. You know, we get our expectations up that something's going to happen, you know, at least hope maybe that they'll be glad that you served them all these years. And they maybe they should have. I'm not saying that the person's wrong that didn't do whatever they're supposed to do. But you know what I was so proud of this lady for? I said, well, now, did you get offended? She said, you know, I started to, and I decided I wasn't going to. She said, because I'm the one that expected something. They never told me, be sure and be there. You know, they never said anything like that. So I'm the one that got my hopes all set. And see, we in our Christian lives often get hurt and offended because of our expectations. They're unrealistic, and they're, they're too hurtful. So uh, Proverbs thirteen twelve says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. That's even any good hope makes your heart sick when you, um, when you don't get what you're expecting to get. Uh, now, number expect, don't expect too much. Number one is don't expect people to understand how you feel about things. Last year, in, in 2004, point one under that is don't expect people to understand how you feel about things. You are married to somebody that's completely opposite of you, no doubt. If you get along halfway decent, you know, I know that my husband and I sort of seem a, a lot alike, but we have a lot of differences. We were driving along the road. We had just gotten that motor home, and we didn't have a trailer at that point, and we didn't have a vehicle uh, to, to drive around. Now, even right here, our our car's broken down in Bakersfield, so we don't have it here. The preacher's been gracious enough to loan us a vehicle to go around in, but we didn't have a vehicle. Well, you know what that meant? People were taking me places, you know, like they'd take me to the grocery store, and they'd take me to go get uh, my laundry done, and you know, because a lot of times people wanted to be with me, which I'm glad to be with you ladies, but I just don't want you to see my underwear. You know, that's that was the hard thing about it, you know? 
So, I had explained all this to my husband about how important it was for us to get a vehicle so, so I could have the freedom to go do laundry by myself, you know. And I'm a, I am so self-conscious that if I got white bread and if I got wheat bread, which I like wheat bread, you know, that's just something funny about me. I like wheat bread. Uh, that if you were standing with me and you said, well, this, wheat, this white bread over here is what I usually get, the store brand, it's cheaper, I'd feel funny like, well, I'm being extravagant by spending $2 on a loaf of bread when you only spend 59 cents. You know, I, I'm just that self-conscious about things. So, oh, going to the grocery store was such a job for me. I, you know, uh, one lady did say that to me. That's why I know that illustration's embedded in my mind. And she didn't mean anything by it. You know, she just thought maybe I didn't see this good white bread over here. So, anyway, everybody's got their, you know, ways that they do things. So, I explained all this to my husband. We were driving across... Uh, Washington State, and as we were driving across Washington State, uh, my husband says to me, he starts talking to Joe, and the, they were in the two front seats in the motorhome, and he starts talking to Joe. He said, you know, Joe, since we don't have a trailer yet, and uh, we, we, and we're getting along fine without having a car and a trailer, he said, we could get us a horse and a horse trailer and pull behind this motorhome. A horse? Can you see me pulling up to your Church, do you have any place for my horse to graze? <laughs> then, you know, in some places, when we, we, we take, uh, we have a dog, a Jack Russell dog, and the dog, we make sure and take him away from the building so that he doesn't leave, you know, blessings. Um, but sometimes if he leaves blessings, then we have to clean up the blessings. Can you see me clean up after a horse? You know, I had all, th this is my problem. As a woman, as soon as you suggest something, I can go through all the steps of what's going to happen and why it's going to, how it's going to happen and all the steps involved in it and all the expense involved in it and keeping it in hay. And, you know, my mind goes crazy thinking of all the things and reasons why we shouldn't have a horse. So him and George is having a blast up there. Oh, man, Dad, that'd be neat. We could teach him tricks. And what do I need a horse to teach tricks to? You know, I got you two that do, do tricks. Uh, but anyway, uh, this all was going, this conversation was going on hot and heavy. And I just, something went over me and I was not a good Christian. You know what I said? I cannot take it. And they said, a voice from beyond. Uh, I was sitting in the back, and I, I was sitting on the back couch, and I said, listen, I, I know that you're just probably talking, and I know that you probably don't really mean it, but I just can't take it when you talk like you're going to get a horse and not let me have a car. You know, and I just can't take it, can't take it, can't take it. And Kevin said, ooh. You know, he made fun of me, and, I, and then I knew I was, had gone too far, and so I quieted down, but it was just... It was just awful, you know, to think that he'd even think of getting a horse instead of getting me a car. You know what? I expect him to understand me. Listen, we've been married 21 years, 22 years this year. He is never going to understand me. We don't think alike. We don't act alike. We don't eat alike. You know, he likes spicy. I like regular. He he's just, it's just funny. You know, he's just, he's just different than me. He is weird. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. And, you know, do you understand, though, now, when I'm not in the heated situation, I just know he's talking. What I get afraid of is when he's talking, he's actually going to go do it. All of a sudden, well, he'll go away, him and Joe sneak away somewhere, and they'll come back with a horse. That's what I fear, you know what I mean? So i got to make sure he knows I would be very unhappy if you got a horse, you know. But isn't that funny how we are? We expect him to understand how we feel, but they will not understand how we feel. They will not understand what you expect. Your expectations cannot be uh, around that. Then, um, under that, expect others, expect others to remember things that you remember. Now, listen, ladies, we are notorious for remembering everything about mistakes in our marriages, aren't we? How many of you could quote bad car deals that you bought in all the years? Anybody like that? I could tell you all the bummer cars we bought that weren't any good, you know. <gasps> you know? And we women, we can keep a list of things in our mind, and they ask us for Kevin, sometimes when he's preaching, he'll ask me for illustrations. Wrong thing to do with me because I can start spitting them off, all that, you know, all these illustrations, you know. But expect, look, he's probably not going to remember the things that you remember. And maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you shouldn't remember the things that you remember. Your marriage might be healthier and better if you didn't remember them. But we do expect people to remember the things we remember. Listen, what about birthdays? Does anybody, don't raise your hand, but does anybody in here have somebody in your life that never remembers your birthday? Doesn't it aggravate you? 
You know what, Mrs. Evans, you remember Mrs. Evans, don't you? She was perfect about that. Her birthday was November the 11th. I don't think I'll ever forget when her birthday is because she started advertising it six weeks before the birthday was coming. Only six more, six weeks more, and it'll be my birthday, you know. She'd start listing what's going to happen. Sometimes some of us have expectations about presents for our birthday, you know. Have you ever gotten a popcorn popper for your birthday? And you really didn't want a popcorn popper. There's other things on your mind that would be even less money that you'd like to have, you know. And so the, Mrs. Evans was really great about that. She taught me to start letting people know. Well, in case anybody wants to know, my birthday's coming in four weeks, you know. I'm already telling the kids what I want for Mother's Day. Yeah, I am. I do that to them because I want them to know what I want and what I'd like to have. It's if they ask, you know, my kids ask. But if they don't ask, you say, wouldn't you like to know what I want for Mother's Day? And of course they're going to say, yes, I want to know. See how cute you can be and manipulate the stuff you want? <laughs> it works so good. Um, if you're reasonable. Now, I'm not talking about expensive stuff, but just reasonable, you know, earrings, things like that. But uh, expect, don't expect people to remember the things that you remember. Don't expect others to side with your viewpoint. You know, nobody's going to do things exactly the same way that you do them. Do you understand that? Don't expect them to, to do that. Uh, we go into churches all the time. And there might be a way that we would do a meeting that would be different than what the preacher does. I remember one situation. We went into a meeting in Florida, and we, we had called the preacher, and he had, said, we, he had called us to come in and do this meeting, and we thought it was going to be Sunday through Wednesday. We got there, and the preacher tells us that we're, we're doing Sunday and Wednesday. So we had Monday and Tuesday with nothing to do, which we could have filled that and had some meetings if we had known it, but we didn't. You know what? We didn't try to think, that preacher doesn't care about us. He doesn't understand what evangelism is, and he doesn't understand what revivals are. You know, we didn't start thinking all that. You know what? We said, praise the Lord. We got Monday and Tuesday off for once. Woo! You know, we just took it to be great. You know, whatever people don't see it, however they don't see it your way, don't try to convince them that your way, about your way. Just let them have their own way. Let them have their own expectations. And you know what? You're the, you are the greater person for that. Okay, so that was point number two about expectations. Point number three, this is a big one. Don't compare yourselves to others. Boy, is this the hard one to do. Because, especially in a close-knit church family, it's hard to do this because you know why? We all, we all live with each other so much on a daily basis. Somebody in this room might have a nicer house than you have. Somebody in this room might have a, a, a better wardrobe than you do. Somebody in this room might have a nicer husband than you do. Isn't that how it is? Some of the, somebody in this room might have children that are better behaved than you. And you compare yourselves to other people and it hurts you. You know, I just, when I, now the comparison for me would be if I was here and another singing family was here, which we've been in those kind of situations before. You know what? I don't bother thinking, oh, they could do this. We are, we are not foolish enough to think that we know everything about music. We, we hardly know. I just hate Brother Mike and the preacher sitting and listening to us because they know so much about music itself. You know, what we've learned, we just learned by playing and doing. But we've been with people like the Marshall family. Have you ever had them here? They know music. You know what? They really know music. Woo! Is it hard to be with them because we feel so inferior to them? But you know what? I don't let them. They're not us. We got a different style, different, there's something different about us, you know, and God uses people in different ways. You're such a wise person if you stop comparing yourself to somebody else. You know what, so this is what I've found about most people in comparison, Mrs. King. They either compare themselves and they are lower, like the other person's better than them. Or they compare themselves and they are superior. The other person's less than them. Oh, she can't rate. Her children are so bad. She could learn a thing, thing or two from me if she would ask me just a few questions. You know, uh, that's how we are when we compare. And that just is a point to show you that it's so not what God wants us to be. He does not want us to compare ourselves. Second Corinthians ten twelve. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. See, all these things that I don't really believe that I see any evidence of Elizabeth comparing herself to Mary. 
she when she walked into the room and when Mary walked into the room she said the babe leaped in her womb she she was excited to have a young woman come in there that was carrying the mother was being the mother of Jesus she was excited about it. she didn't come here and say well, how come God wouldn't let me carry the Christ child now I've been righteous I've been good you know I know scripture says virgin but you know aren't we all like that that we could compare it, but Elizabeth wasn't that kind of a lady. I don't see Elizabeth having great expectations. She kept praying for to have a child, but she didn't let her expectations get away with her. She realized that she was barren. She, I believe she'd settled her mind that this is the way she's going to be the rest of her life, and she was happy with it because she accepted God's will. See, that's how you'll be happy. Whatever the person is you want to change, if you'll just accept that person for, that, for the way they are, you'll be happy. Because you're not trying to change them all the time. Uh, she, I believe Elizabeth was an example of a person that lived the Bible. She, she, she made herself do what was right in not letting herself get hurt in all kinds of situations. Now, how do you find yourself? Do you find yourself in one of these kind of situations where you are get, letting your feelings get hurt? You know, and then wearing your feelings on your sleeve and pouting. You know, women do pout. We don't pout with our lips up like that. You know how we pout? By being quiet. Yes? Okay. Whatever you say. That's how we pout, isn't it? I, and, you know, I just, when I do that, and I have done it, that's why I know how to do it. <laughs> uh, when I do that, you know what? I'm waiting for him to say, what's the matter? And you know what? He is so dumb, he won't even ask me what's the matter. No, he's not, that, that, he's not dumb. You know what? He's smart enough to say, I'm not going to even open that can of worms. I'm just going to let it be like this. At least it's quiet. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So if you would overcome this, you'd be a better person. You'd be a greater person. Uh, 2 Timothy 1.9 says, Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. I believe God's got a purpose for you in, in, he's got a purpose for you. He's got a perfect will for you. Now, are you fulfilling that will by not being hurt? I believe there's people that get overlooked in jobs, in church, because the preacher can't trust you with it because your feelings, you're too feelings oriented. We need godly women in our churches. I believe there's a lot of times that your husband won't tell you the truth of what's going on in his life because he's afraid of what you'll say. Because you're too feelings oriented. This is all about control. You know, I just decided I'm not letting my feelings get hurt. Now, you, I, you heard an illustration of 2004 when I did let my feelings get hurt and I got offended. So I, I don't, I'm not perfect all the time with this, but you know what? I work on it. Now let me ask you this. Are you going to work on it? The next time, I tell you what, just, just in the next couple of days, God's going to let an illust something happen to you, and you're going to say, this is what she was talking about. I'm, and then you control yourself. You say, you're going to feel pretty good about yourself because you just decided I'm not going to get hurt. How not to get hurt? This is very important to us. It makes all of our relationships better when we don't walk around letting our feelings get hurt all the time. Father, thank you so much for these good ladies.